This is our family travel vlog. We travel Australia and check out family Hi, friendly I'm things to do. The great thing about Cairns is that it sits between World Heritage National Park, the Wet Tropics National Park on the left, and the Great Barrier Reef on the right there. And as you go into town here, you can see that it, Cairns itself is actually on a mud flat. And you can see the big pool, communal pool, in the middle of town there that's very popular. And the wharf where you can catch trips out to the islands and surrounded by mountains. And where you really want to do in Cairns is get out of town, get out to do the uh, rainforest, have a swim in the water, and also um, enjoy the mountains and the tablelands beyond. What you doing? Then, it's about 1,800 kilometres, 1,800 kilometres north of Brisbane. And Brisbane's already tropical, and you can imagine it gets quite wet and hot and steamy in the wet season. And cyclones and uh, heavy rains are part of the deal when you get up there, even up to 100, 200 millimetres in a day. But it's quite dramatic and spectacular in the wet season too, then I wouldn't rule that out. And there's far less tourists up there. This is the tablelands out behind Cairns, and there's plenty of places you can go up there and enjoy the waterfalls or like a laid back way of life. We lived in a rainforest a little bit outside of town and um, got to enjoy the tropical wonder that is Cairns. This is out in the tablelands behind Paranella Park. And we've got reviews to all these places on our website. Then drop by My Family Vacation Ideas and have a look. Little road trip we made. The boulders south of Cairns, Paranella Park. This place was made about 100 years ago. Little road trip from Cairns into the mountains. And it's surrounded by beautiful beaches, waterfalls. That's on the trip up to Cranda. Beautiful Cairns Market. Little day trip up to Port Douglas is always on the cards if you live in Cairns. One of the most beautiful road trips you can do. It's on a par with some of the some of the like the Great Ocean Road and even the Cabot Trail in Canada. A couple of hours west and you're out in the outback. And there's always something happening in Cairns. There's a festival on or something like that. And this is true of nearly almost any week of the year. Um, from the city, you can catch a train up to the village in the rainforest. That's Coranda there. A little walk I did in town called the Red Arrow Walk. While you're in Cairns, make sure you get up to Cape Tribulation, where the reef meets the rainforest. Far away from the rest of the world is Cape Tribulation. You won't find any bus services here, and for half the year, it's more or less cut off from the rest of the world because of the wet season. But the payoff is the magnificent rainforest and wild beaches, opportunities to see crocodiles in the wild, from a distance of course, and a true wilderness area. We did spot some crocodiles about one kilometre south of the campground, but they were relatively small and we stayed way back. But it is important to stay crockwise and not walk too close to the water. Noah Beach Campground lies only a few metres away from both the Great Barrier Reef and the tropics rainforest, but offers protection from both. While you can't bring a caravan down here, it did offer us a great place to camp in a family tent, and we took our regular two-wheel drive car over the ferry bridge. Bring plenty of drinking water with you, or treat the water that's there. You can book online, or at the service kiosk. Basically, after you go over the ferry, travel north for about 25 kilometres and you'll find it. The campground is only open for part of the year, and is popular, then book early. But the Daintree is an amazing spot. Beautiful long sandy beaches, headlands. Huge ranges rise out from the coast, covered in deep, thick rainforest. There's about 17,000 hectares of dense rainforest in the Cape Tribulation section. Where else in the world can you get to experience two world heritage natural attributes side by side? And in Australia, this is known as the place where the reef meets the rainforest. And you can actually see the Great Barrier Reef from the shorelines in places instead of having to travel miles out by boat. Other parts of the year, you can take a kayak tour and see whales swimming off the beach and cruise along with them. The park also has a number of very rare plants and most of the world's primitive plant species are found here. Alexandra Lookout, about five kilometers north of the ferry, provides excellent views of the whole area. And there are plenty of tours to do, guided walks. You can visit a fruit farm or simply explore the miles and miles of beautiful beaches. 
Obviously you'll want to visit in the dry season from May to September before the wet rains come and drench the place with over six meters of rain and high humidity makes it almost impossible to do anything. Visit My Family Vacation Ideas for more great ideas and hit the subscribe button below to keep up with all our great ideas. 45 minutes away from Cairns is amazing Fitzroy Island. Boats leave from the Reef Fleet Terminal and go every day. Then it's amazing to think you can live in Cairns and within 40 minutes you're on a pristine island on the inner Great Barrier Reef. And it really is a really nice island. In contrast to Green Island, which is the other popular island of Cairns, it's far less touristed. A lot of the island is gazetted as a national park and you really do get it all here there's pristine rainforests mangroves beautiful white sandy beaches and best of all the snorkeling right off the beach is pretty amazing the waters are calm which is great for kids you'll likely find it hard to fit everything in especially if you opt for things like the glass bottom boat tour as well and the paddle ski like i did well tried anyway there are miles and miles of really beautiful walking trails through rainforest to secluded beaches walks up hills to see stunning views and lots and lots of untouched landscapes if you don't get snorkeling gear or use of the trampoline with your package you can hire them at the beach house when snorkeling it's always recommended that you wear a wetsuit because of the risk of marine stingers. Marine stingers are especially active when the wind is from the northeast and in summer when the waters are warmer, especially when the waters are over 28 degrees. But these stingers are always a risk. Then always make sure you're wearing the wetsuit with gloves. You can see footage of the snorkeling on our website. But on a good day, you really will see thousands of fish, different colors, all different types of coral, some as big as house, and all only a stone's throw from the beach. On one occasion, my wife and I snorkeled around to a nearby beach. Not that we're strong swimmers, but it took us an hour and a half, driven on by the beauty of the, the seascape. Spotting all sorts of reef sharks, barracuda, brightly colored clam, and listening to the fish chomping on the coral. It really was a magical day in crystal clear waters. There are lots of packages available also to help you enjoy a trip to Fitzroy Island. Some with sea kayaking and lots of other tour inclusions and combinations. You can also stay at the resort which has about 100 rooms. It's kid friendly and has a nice pool, kids playroom and is quite tastefully done. See reviews from our website. Fitzroy was once connected to Cairns but then about 10,000 years ago the valley between Fitzroy Island and Cairns was flooded. This is now a World Heritage Site and it covers more than 339 hectares. For thousands of years, this has been home to the Gunganji people, the Aboriginal people who enjoyed the island before Captain Cook arrived. It also was a quarantine station for the Chinese people when they arrived, looking for gold. It was used as a pearling base and an artillery gun base during the war. It's been a penal colony and also a mission was established here in 1905. Some of the best walks on the island include the Secret Garden which is about a one kilometer return, Nudie Beach which is a beautiful white sandy beach which is about a 1.2 kilometer return, the Lookout which is, takes you about 30 minutes and the Lighthouse Road. Herberton Historical Village is a recreation of an old time Queensland village. Really it's bits and pieces of old houses that have been put together by some avid enthusiasts. The site now covers about 16 acres. There's shops, bar, bank, chemist, grocer, painter and a garage. And there's more than 50 restored buildings from the period. And if you like old time collectibles and generally things old, this is a great place to visit. But kids will also find it fascinating and probably have a giggle that there are some things they've never seen that you know about. There's also a couple of um, old time restaurants. It is a little pricey, but the good thing is that kids are free if they're under four years of age. But it is $70 for a family and $27 for an adult, children $12 if they're older than four. And we spent the good part of the day here because it is a 90 minute drive from Cairns and something to do interesting in the Queensland Outback. Or is this the Outback? Let's hear your comments below. Subscribe and like and get more great family vacation ideas from my family vacation ideas website.
Michaelmas Cay is located on the Great Barrier Reef off Cairns. It's about 40 miles from Cairns. The great thing about Michaelmas is the amount of bird life, beautiful sooty terns and dozens of other species of birds. You can also explore the reef with giant clams and lots of other beautiful coral sea life. And that makes it about 17 kilometers north of Green Island. And because of the amount of birds on the island, it was once used as a guano mining area, but also was used for cucumber pickers. And the local indigenous people also have a lot of history with this area. Over time, bits of coral and other rubble have sort of melded together with algae to form this beautiful island. Seeds have been brought in by birds and the island has stabilized, or the K I I should say. It's now been a national park since 1975 and during the afternoon it's roped off. That in our time in Cairns this was one of the only places that we saw a sea turtle. But there are also mollusks and invertebrates of all different kinds. During the summer you can see thousands and thousands of birds, up to 20,000. We took an ocean spirit cruise out to Michaelmas Cay on a 32 meter luxury sailing cat. Some of the activities included snorkeling, but there's also a semi-submersible if you prefer that. Or you can simply chill out and enjoy the birds. We got to enjoy a full four hours on the reef, morning and afternoon teas, beautiful lunch and a fish feeding presentation. They also included these wetsuits, which are almost mandatory, well are mandatory really in this part of the world at this time of the year. When we got back to Cairns, everyone was saying what a hot day it was. But did we notice? Not really. It was beautiful out there. This sort of experience is pricey but extremely memorable. A family ticket will cost about $514 or, or nearly $200 for adults. But if you're in Australia, at least take one opportunity to enjoy the reef. There are many trips that start at much less than this and give you the opportunity to explore the reef. It's an amazing feature that covers almost 2,300 kilometres across the northern coast of Australia, from the south at Lady Alley Island right up to the tip of Australia. Watch for more ideas on the reef like this one and other family friendly activities in Queensland, Australia and the world. Visit My Family Vacation Ideas. Subscribe below and why not like the video while you're at it. Thanks for watching. This is our little review of the Butterfly Sanctuary in Coranda. We were up at the markets like many people are and decided to drop in. It says on the website it has over 1500 magnificent tropical butterflies including the Ulysses and the Cairns Birdwing Butterfly and we love those and we thought it's probably a good place for the kids. Let's find out. It was really interesting and we got to see even like the huge big Hercules butterflies and the bird wings and all these things. Then we found it was really quite kid friendly. Even the tour, which you think is probably not that kid friendly, the kids really enjoyed looking at the like the little larva. Now included in every package is a tour through the butterfly sanctuary where all the caterpillars are breeding. And you can see them in their various stages before they go out and become fully fledged butterflies. We actually really enjoyed this part. We got to see some big bugs and it was interesting and fascinating. We got to ask questions and the kids were asking a lot of questions as well. The sanctuary is open most days from 9.45 a.m. until 4 p.m. except for Christmas Day, Anzac days. If you're driving, simply head straight up the range through Smithfield there. The cost is about $20 for adults and about 
ten dollars for kids at the time of writing but you can probably pick up the package with other tours then yes i would recommend this tour especially seeing if you're taking the train up to Cranda, you're looking around the markets doing a few things it does get a little bit boring if you have to wait for the train for hours and hours